Hi, right, this is Average John here, coming at you. Uh, just a quick, uh, quick, some quick updates, I guess. I guess what I'm saying is, what's what I'm reading now. I'm a slow reader, but I've been reading over the week the uh, True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. This is by Dark Horse Comics. Sorry, the things get in the way. My Dark Horse Comics is by uh, Gerard Way. <laughs> it's awesome. He is the lead singer of uh, My Chemical Romance. So, and that was actually their last uh, album before they went on a hiatus. So that's cool. Um, also, another update, a, a podcast that I think you all should listen to, that I personally recommend, is uh, Empty Inside by uh, Jeanette McCurdy. You might know her from her acting days, uh, from uh, iCarly, uh, Sam and Cat, or, yeah, shows from Nickelodeon. But really, Empty Inside, which is her podcast, is just eradicates all that pretty much just in a, in a sense like in those shows yes you you see her as a person but the podcast just makes you like relate to her so much more it talks about depression and all eating disorders and all that stuff it just even if those aren't what you're facing or what you're faced with or whatever or what you're dealing with you can uh this and that kind of relate to what they're uh, saying, even though if you're struggling with your own problems, it's extremely relatable and the community is just great. So I would definitely watch that. Um, so it's got Empty Inside. It's by uh, Jeanette McCarty. Um, and so far, I know it's available on Spotify and YouTube and Patreon. You can add to her Patreon. But, uh, I don't know where else, else is available. I feel like Ricky Bobby, kind of. I don't know what to do with my hands. So, <laughs> but go check her out. And she is awesome. Um, but for today, now for, for a while, since like last year, I've been watching the uh, Arrowverse and trying to catch up on that uh, and uh, yeah it's going to take me a few a few months a few years <laughs> for I'm officially caught up on it but I've caught up on a bunch I'm currently on like uh, currently just finished uh, the Arrow season 3 the Flash season 1 and so I'm just catching up uh, just watching a Supergirl episode 1 but so far, it's, it's been pretty nice, you know? Uh, so, basically, well, the Arrowverse, it's a DC's a show universe, in a sense. Like, kind of meant to challenge uh, the MCU, or whatever. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, it's cool, guys, like... Every season or whatever uh, of any show pretty much like this deals with the uh, problems of oneself. It includes cameos of uh, others included. If that makes sense. It's kind of like the MCU, how you can watch any single MCU movie and, and not have to watch any of the others. Except, like, the Avengers, but, uh, that's different. So, what does the Arrowverse include? It includes the Arrow, the Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, Black Lightning, Batwoman, and Stargirl. As of now. But we'll be adding Superman and Lewis. Um, so, where am I right now? I just told you, uh... Season, uh, all of season three of The Arrow and all of season one of The Flash. 
So, how does the arrow hold up? Who are the heroes of the arrow? Um, the arrow? Big spoiler there. <laughs> the arrow, Oliver Queen, uh, Arsenal, this is Roy Harper, uh, Black Canary, which is at first Sarah Lance, then, uh, then the Silver Lance, uh, and got Red Arrow with Theo Queen, Captain Adam, who is Ray Palmer. And the villains, you have Malcolm Merlin, Steve Wilson, otherwise known as Deathstroke, and uh, Raj Hogul. Yeah. And, like, the side villains, this couple side villains that I remember, you have uh, Isabel Rochoff, my favorite side villain, or whatever. Uh, you got Sebastian Blood, and then you have the Count. And this big list, like, random characters uh, that I can't, can't necessarily figure out, with, like, or whatever, couldn't figure out where to put them. Uh, you got Nisa, Maceo, Amanda Waller, and Deadshot. Now, I'm obviously leaving out a lot of characters like you know, Quentin Lance, uh, John and Lila Diggle, uh, Tatsu, Akio, uh, Moira Queen, and Walter, who I forgot his last name. But it's a pretty stacked show. And uh, I'm probably going to go over the, Not probably. Uh, I am going to go over the plot, so there's spoilers here. Uh, so, if, if you want to leave, or, you know, leave a like on the video, then leave, then go back and watch the show up to season three, then come back. <laughs> so, what the show is basically about Oliver Queen and his disappearance onto the island of Leon Yu for five years, how he survived, how he's contacted no one, basically. But he made a promise to his father, Robert Queen, on a, a, a boat uh, that he will save his city and that he will execute everyone in this book he has written. Um, it turns out that the book is not necessarily uh, uh, needed for saving the city or whatever, Starling City. Uh, but he starts going alone and then joins in. John Diggle, who is originally his bodyguard. Uh, then uh, Felicity Smoke, who is the secretary of Queen Consolidated, his business. So in the first season, he deals with uh, Malcolm Merlin, who uh, is behind this uh, undertaking of uh, Starling City, uh, wanting to get rid of the glades and everything. So, I'm basically just killing a lot of people, which does not bode well. So, he's the first villain of the series. Um, so, he defeats him, but not before the uh, undertaking actually goes on. Um, uh, he defeats Malcolm, and then Slade Wilson comes back. He thought Slade Wilson was dead. He didn't kill him in uh, Leon Yu, he just left him because they all thought that he was dead. Because um, he uh, injected Mirakuru in himself, or no, they injected Mirakuru in him. And Mirakuru is this uh, experimental drug, pretty much, where it's kind of like a steroid, but it's really risky. Uh, you don't know if you're going to survive it or not. But Slade does, and he uses a Sebastian blood to kind of fuel his Miraku army to get back at uh, the arrow because uh, he had a choice whether or not to, to kill Shadow, person that he loved, or to kill Sarah, which is a person that Oliver loved, and he didn't choose, so person chose for him and shot Shadow, which disappointed Slade. So Slade goes on a revenge rampage and recruits people like Isabel Rochoff, 
is played by Summer Glau, who actually was part of one of my favorite shows, uh, Firefly. Now she plays a uh, uh, River Tam in the show. So and that's another excellent series that I'll talk about sometime. And that that's awesome. But uh, yeah, so he has a tough time defeating uh, um, Slade Wilson, uh, but he does it, but not before the Slade like infects uh, uh, Roy Harper with Mercury. And Roy Harper, for a little bit, goes off the deep end because, of course, he's drugged up. He doesn't know what's going on. Um, so, but he uh, gets kind of saved, and he becomes an uh, arsenal to the uh, uh, to the arrow. And then uh, what happens after that? So it turns out Malcolm Merlin survived. Uh, and he uh, drugged up a uh, Thea to actually uh, kill uh, Sarah, who was the Black Canary at the time. And uh, Sarah's death, uh, Laurel actually takes up the mantle as Black Canary. So, but Malcolm takes a video of Thea killing, uh, killing Sarah. And he sends it to Raj al Ghul, because he was a part of the League of Assassins. So, he comes to Starling City, uh, Nisa comes to Starling City, and uh, Oliver actually challenges uh, Raj al Ghul first, and then Raj al Ghul almost kills him, basically stabs him, and throws him off a mountain, but uh, Oliver gets treated by uh, uh, Maseo and uh, Tatsu. And he gets treated and he uh, gets healed. He goes back for a little bit to, uh, he goes back to Starling City for a little bit. He does that. And then he goes back to uh, challenge Ross Ogul. And Ross Ogul is like, wait, nobody's ever been like, defeated by me and has come back for challenge. So you must replace me. You must be my, the, the heir to the throne to the Lazarus pit, which is, the soul waters uh, pond that makes him mortal. And that's how Rasha Ogul has survived for like hundreds and hundreds of years. But, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, he, Oliver has a choice. He had to either become his heir or to watch Starling City get demolished. So he tries to be, he becomes, and, well, he agrees. To uh, Ra Ra Sal Ghul. He agrees unwillingly, uh, basically, like, and his team is unwilling to uh, accept that Alpha Queen is the new Ra Sal Ghul. So they actually come to, like, uh, rescue him, but they get captured as well. But uh, Ra Sal Ghul is uh, defeated, so they all come back. Uh, Roy. Uh, leaves uh, for for this. I don't, I don't know for now or whatever. Um, uh, Roy leaves. Uh, Oliver leaves, uh, leaving only the team uh, left. The team of like the uh, uh, well, uh, Oliver leaves with Felicity. So. Uh, leaving only Thea, John Diggle, uh, Lila, his, his wife, um, uh, his wife, uh, Laurel. So I'm only leaving like those four. That's, that's where I am. Yeah, I mean, but the best villain of the series so far has to be Destro. He has the most time. Uh, to actually be well, to actually shine, that makes sense. Because uh, he was in the first season, but only in flashbacks. Uh, in the second season, he's purely a villain. 
And he's had the most, he has had the most time to shine, you know, and his motives are pretty clear, even though they're dastardly, they're, they're clear. And yeah, he is just, he's just the most badass. <laughs> well, yeah. The second thing I watched, yeah, The Flash, he's one. Um, the heroes, yeah. Another spoiler, The Flash. Flash, Barry Allen, uh, Sco Romano, Caitlin Snow, Joe, and Iris West, Eddie Thawne. Uh, ambiguous characters are you know, Firestorm versus uh, Ronnie and Martin Stein. Uh, villains, Harrison Wells, otherwise known as Eobard Thawne, or the Reverse Flash, uh, Captain Cold. Gorilla Grodd, Golden Glider, Heat Wave, the Pied Piper, and General Eiling. Now, basically, uh, spoilers again for The Flash Season 1, so like this video, watch Season 1, then come back to this video. Um, yeah, so basically, Star Labs is making this particle accelerator that blows up and puts a lot of people in a coma but gives a lot of people uh, powers uh, making them uh, meta-humans uh, including Barry Allen who becomes the Flash who can run at super speed in fact a lot of uh, newspapers call him the streak at first because you, you can't see him in any of the pictures he's a streak um, but yeah, he helps out uh, Star Labs and the police department uh, finding crimes of other better humans. Um, Joe West already knows, he knows automatically. Um, so yeah, but further, further down the line, uh, like this guy called the Reverse Flash shows up and Barry starts to I wonder actually about the uh, uh, past because he's wondering who is this guy and it turns out that's Eobard Thawne, that's uh, Harrison Wells. So he was just like, how is it this guy? This guy's been helping me out all along. Well, it turns out uh, that he went back in time uh, and he can't find a way out so he's helping the Flash. Uh, helping the Flash being able to time travel and break the time stream and stuff. Um, so that leads to them finding out the particle accelerator explosion was not an accident. It was actually used to create a Barry Allen. And uh, Eobar Thawne being there just kind of screwing up the time stream. So it's just... Uh, it's ridiculous, but it's it's a good season, definitely. Um, and you know, I say go watch it now. But the best feeling of season one has to be Gorilla Grodd, just because. Uh, uh, <coughs> I didn't get into a. Excuse me. I didn't get into Heroes pretty much until around like two years ago, right? And I, I've watched the MCU a lot since pretty much the beginning. I've never really seen an animal villain. I've seen like people villains and the closest I've seen probably would be a T-Grass of uh, Wonder Woman. But uh never seen fully animal uh, villains that make sense so Gorilla Grodd is going to be like the first one and he is a so smart genius level smart and he is so strong like basically somehow the particle accelerator explosion uh, just got to him 
and nothing else in this zoo as far as I know. And just made them a super villain that just excellent, just unique in his own way. And so so I, I just love it. And he's super scary too when he's first introduced or whatever, you don't necessarily see him but you hear him. And it's in the sewers, which is why I saw it be like Killer Croc or something. At first, not Gorilla Grodd. But just that whole scene. It's amazing. It's amazing. I gotta go check it out. Alright. But. So. That is it so far. I mean, and to recap, yeah, I watched uh, The Arrow all the way up to Season 3, The Flash, all of Season 1. I'm starting Supergirl. And Supergirl is a pretty good show so far. I watched the uh, two episodes. So, it's, it's pretty good so far. I mean, really, it's all about um, female power right now. How Supergirl wants to be known as Supergirl and not as Superman's cousin. So, so, so far it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, um, if you all have any questions or if, if you want to post your own Arrowverse updates or anything, just type them up in the comments below. I'd love to read those. <laughs> you know? but yeah, also, uh, have an Instagram at uh, Average Dawn. Uh, my Facebook's at Official Average Dawn, and my Twitter is at Real Average Dawn. If you want to reach me directly, those are the best ways to do it. Want to engage? Those are the best ways to do it. Uh, and I will be reading some of the comments down there. And I will be replying to them. Maybe not fast, but I will reply. <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a nice day. I'm gonna have to do that again because I couldn't find the stop button at a reasonable time. I'm slow. So, again, have a nice day.